For more on this, I'm joined by Mumin Sheikh, a former undercover counterterrorism operative for CSIS and the RCMP, Danny Asif, a Toronto-based lawyer and advocate for the Muslim community, and Stephanie Carvin, an assistant professor of international relations at Carleton University in Ottawa. Good evening to all of you. Good evening, Susan. Good evening. So, sadly, we've seen these kinds of attacks all over the world. Cars used as weapons. Should we be surprised that it happened in Canada? Obviously, a very tragic event. Mubeen. No, we should not be surprised. Uh, what's happened is we've become conditioned to these attacks, certainly because uh, of how many attacks there have been. Uh, the question is, uh, how will we respond to them? Will we remain responsible and vigilant, or are we going to fall into uh, tired, uh, you know, tropes of us versus them attitudes? Stephanie, is there something that could have been done to insulate us from this kind of an attack? I think in the aftermath of these kinds of attacks, you often hear questions about, well, what can we do to make us safer? Or, you know, why didn't the police have this person uh, under surveillance? And certainly, I think we'll hear those questions because this person was actually, uh, was known to police. But the fact is, it's very hard to know when someone is going to mobilize to violence. So, you know, other than, you know, trying to have good relations with the community, trying to develop trust and, and getting uh, information from those kinds of sources, it's very difficult to stop a lone actor with a truck and a knife. Danny, you grew up in Edmonton. Are you surprised that that city was a target? You know, Susan, I really, I am. I mean, I'm not naive, but I am. It's my hometown, and uh, the Muslim community goes back almost a century, including my own family and including building the first mosque in Edmonton. But I am both heartbroken and I'm angry. I am heartbroken for the families and the victims of this senseless, terrible, t terrorist criminal act and that these people were going about their daily lives and they had to suffer. And I'm angry also that somebody would do this in the name of our faith. It is absolutely horrendous. No person of faith would do this. And it makes me angry that they would take somehow the banner of Islam and distort it and try to speak in our name. That is absolutely, absolutely unacceptable in Canada and unacceptable for us as Canadians and Muslims. Mubi, now I want to talk about the details of this um, event. The police are saying they're investigating a possible terrorism charges. There's only one reference to an ISIS flag in a car that police say they found. So what makes this a terrorist attack? Well, what they're going to have to look for is uh, intention, of course, because uh, criminal law, the way it works, is guilty intention, guilty action. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff. I mean, they're going through everything with a fine-tooth comb. I'm sure they have information already, but, you know, they're not going to release it to the public because there's a prosecution um, that is that is going to be underway. So uh, I, I wouldn't read too much into it. Um, I'm sure they are going to find uh, evidence of intention. Uh, certainly the action shows uh, it's terrorist in nature. I mean, the, the, the type of attack, uh, it's the modus operandi of ISIS. So, uh, you know, give the police uh, their space. Uh, let them do what they do, and we'll get more information as it comes out. But, Stephanie, the modus operandi of ISIS, what they're saying is this was a lone attacker, that there wasn't a cell associated with this, at least they don't think so at this time. How confident can we be about that? Well, it seems that maybe what they're referring to is that the individual perhaps made the decision to mobilize by himself. That, you know, generally we, in, you know, those of us who study this phenomenon, uh, radicalization is understood as a social process. You know, you don't wake up one morning and decide to conduct a terrorist attack. Instead, you know, you have to interact with people either in person, online, and in many cases it's usually both. So I, I think we need to just be careful with the language here that this person may have suddenly decided to do something. But that's going to be part of the investigation that goes forward, whether this person was egged on by someone or whether, you know, this person just got to the point where uh, he was inspired. But certainly the lone actor part would probably refer more to the decision to mobilize rather than the actual radicalization process. You know, Susan, I just, I, I knew we need to talk about this person and I hope they're punished to the fullest extent of the law. But I also don't want to paint this person as strong. This loser, this ignorant terrorist criminal is the weak one. It is Canada that is strong. Canada is bigger and stronger than this minion 
this criminal. And I don't want to overestimate what this person can do to our great country and our great heritage but and to our overall Canadian values. Danny, you've talked about this before. How worried are you about a backlash? We have seen it before in this country. I am. It, uh, as a Canadian who, like all Canadians love this country and cherishes everything that it is and including on its 150th birthday and the 100th anniversary of Vimy Ridge and all the sacrifices that brought us here it is with vigilance and without complacency that I amongst other Canadians guard against people destroying and dividing us so I am concerned about it because like any marriage or any relationship it can break down without that food and without that nourishment that continues to be provided by its citizens and that's why I'm here today and that's why I want to continue the engagement as a Canadian in every capacity to ensure that we don't lose our way and compromise what is great about this country. Mubin, is there anything about our diversity and our inclusiveness and our uh, attitude as Canadians that makes us a target? Is this something that people are trying to puncture? Hmm. Of course, uh, they would be trying to puncture it. I mean, there's a lot of jealousy for our prime minister and by extension, our country. Um, and look, the Canada has been involved in the coalition. You know, we've, we've been taking the fight to ISIS where it matters. Uh, we are not bombing indiscriminately from the skies. So the, the argument of we're killing women and children doesn't apply. Uh, but the fact that we are involved in the coalition just by default uh, puts us on the list. ISIS specifically named Canada on that list. Uh, so no matter how good we are, uh, and we are very good to the Muslim community, the vast majority of Muslims are very loyal, very law-abiding people, cooperate with intelligence, police services. Uh, ISIS hates that. ISIS knows uh, that, you know, in, when these attacks happen, there are a small group of people who will fall into these us-versus-them narratives. And I want to let them know that you are literally and exactly doing what ISIS wants you to do, to divide us, uh, and, and that's how they will conquer us. So uh, no complacency, all, only vigilance, and we have to be really, really smart about what we say and what we do. Uh, sorry, just one quick thing. You mentioned about backlash. You know, in Edmonton, Alberta, there, there is a footprint of, uh, of the far right in Edmonton. Um, so let's just say don't be surprised if there is a retaliatory attack on Muslims um, soon. Stephanie, I wanted to add, bring up that point about extremism on another side, on the far right. How concerned are you that that might happen? Um, I am concerned. I mean, this was not a great weekend for Canada in terms of uh, extremism. We had just yesterday two uh, basic protests by uh, white nationalists, uh, perhaps Nazis, frankly, uh, one of which was able to shut down a border crossing for a number of hours. Another one involved uh, some violent skirmishes, one involving a knife. So, you know, I mean, extremism in Canada, you, you worry about it growing, and you worry that, uh, as, uh, you know, both Danny and Mubin have said, that, you know, this could feed into some of the narratives that we really don't want gaining traction. At the end of the day, if we look at Alberta, if we look at extremism coming to Alberta, it's actually very diverse. We've had everyone from uh, the, the, the Gordon brothers to Damien Claremont to Salman Ashrafi and now this individual. It, it is, a, you know, there's not one profile of of person who radicalizes to violence. If there was, we'd have solved terrorism because but we could identify them. You, right. you brought up the protests at the border <sighs> this weekend, and this attacker is a refugee to this country. Danny, right. that makes it uh, a more difficult conversation. It, can it does a, and it doesn't. Oh, I think what can be, I think the issue here is that, you know, uh, being a refugee makes you statistically less likely to be involved in crime and violence. Uh, I worry that people are going to cherry pick this case. And again, you know, I just highlighted, you know, several individuals, all from very yeah. diverse backgrounds and experiences, who have participated in violent extremism. So we need to be careful, as uh, Mubin right. said, when we're, we make these generalizations. Okay. Uh, I've seen the win of, uh, sorry, the Edmondson police say some very smart things, I think, about the importance to work with the community. And hopefully that kind of uh, language continues from our leaders and our police forces, because I think that's what's really going to help uh, Dan solve and this Susan, issue. Danny, I just last wanna, word, yeah, just very just briefly. Just very briefly, quickly, I think, firstly, the experiment of Islam in Canada has already been proven to be a benefit to this country. Like I say, the first little mosque on the prairie was built in Edmonton itself in 1938, and we have contributed greatly to this country like many others. May God continue to bless Canada. Amen. All right, thank you all very much. A very important debate tonight.